Hello everyone. In this video we're going to talk about geometric optics to solve some practice problems and learn through them. So this first question asks an object that is 10 centimeters in front of a converging lens and the converging lens has a focal length of 5 centimeters and so they're asking where the image is. So let's talk about this question. First they're asking us that there's, there's a uh, converging lens. So we need to talk about types of lenses. In general, we're going to have two types of lenses, maybe converging, which you see on the left side. And then we're going to have diverging, which you see on the right side. So with converging lenses, the light is going to enter the lens and is going to be deflected toward the center of it. So if I were to draw this a little better, you'd see it like this. So the light all uh, converges together. And so we're going to call this the, the front of the lens, and then this is the back of the lens. So the image that's going to be formed is, <coughs> excuse me, The image is going to be in the, at the back of the lens. So we're going to call this a real image for a converging lens. And uh, I didn't show it, but if, if you had the object, let's say it was facing upward here, it's going to be facing downward. So the image is going to be inverted. Real images are always inverted. All right, so that's a converging lens. Diverging lens the light is going to enter and then it's just going to kind of go outwards away from each other. So the light rays will deflect in different directions. So it's just going to go straight, but like that. Now you might say there's no image here, but if you actually f trace the path of the light rays back, they will form um, an image, but it's since we're just tracing the path, it's not a real image, it's actually a virtual image. And so a virtual image, say the um say the um, say the object is here, the image is gonna be here and it's gonna be upright. And it's gonna be a, again a virtual image. Alright. So that's the difference between them. Now, in the equations by convention, the virtual image, when we try and calculate its distance from the foot, from the from the um, middle of the lens, the distance of the image is going to be negative. Okay? And the focal length of a diverging lens, um, its focal length is going to be also negative. And for real images, it's in converging lenses, it's going to be positive. Okay? In this case, we have a converging lens, so. I'll show you where that um, shows up in the equations. So let's delete this divergent lens and do, do the problem. <coughs> now, when we when we look at these equations, we always want to measure the distance of the object. So this is the object, and the distance of the image from the center of the lens, which would be like kind of over here, right? So this this measurement right here would be the distance of the object and then here we would have the distance of the image and then um, lenses you know if you were to follow their path um, let's so say we, we draw this lens so it looks kind of like this if you were to redraw the entire circular path of this right, you would get a full circle and that circle would have a specific, you know, radius. So your circle, I can draw this a little better here. Your circle would have a certain radius, right? If you take that radius and divide it by two, so let's take the radius, let's not do that. Let's take the radius and divide it by two. You will get the focal length. So when we say the focal length of a lens, 
or that of a mirror, but this time, in this case, a lens. We're talking about if you extend the uh, shape of the lens entirely into a full circle and measure its radius and divide it by two, you will get the focal length. Okay, so you don't need to necessarily know that to solve this problem, but I just want to tell you what focal length means, okay, so that you understand what it is, what it's measuring. So there's an equation that will um, relate focal length, the distance from the um, image and the distance from the object, and here it is. <coughs> 1 over the focal length is equal to 1 over distance from object plus 1 over distance from image. And keep in mind that if the lens is diverging, right, this quantity is going to become negative. Um, and then the image, when it's diverging, is always going to be a virtual image, so this quantity will also be negative. So just keep those in mind. But in this case, it's a converging lens. Right? It's not going to be a problem. So we're told the, f the focal length is 5 centimeters. Since everything is in the same units, we can basically just uh, use centimeters. Okay. And then we have distance from object. So they tell us the object is 10 centimeters in front of the converging lens. Generally, with these questions, always, always, almost always, the, the object is going to be on the left side. Right? That's how people um, usually view this as, just to make things um, easier by convention. And then we're solving for the distance from the image. Right? They're saying where the image is. So if you solve this, Put this into your calculator, um, you'll get di is equal to 10 centimeters. So the so the di here is 10. While the do, right, the distance from the object is also 10. And the focal length of the lens is um, is 5 centimeters. Alright. So let's go to our second practice problem. Um, this is a tough one, but go ahead and try it, and then I will go over the answer and how to do it. So we're told that an object is placed 60 centimeters from a converging lens, and it forms a real image. So we don't know the focal length of the converging lens, but all we know is that it's placed 60 centimeters from it. So if you were to write out the whole equation again, distance from object, distance from image, right? It's a converging lens, so the focal length should be positive. Um, it will be once we solve it. And we don't know the distance from the image. All right. That's the first situation. Then there's a second situation. The object has moved to 40 centimeters from the lens, right? So same lens, same focal length. That hasn't changed, but we're going to move it a little closer, right? So we're going to make it 40 centimeters, the distance from the object. And then it says the image moves 10 centimeters further from the lens. What that means is <coughs> the image is going to be at the same spot, but 10 centimeters further out. So we're going to add 10 to this. If you want to visualize it, we can. Right, we can place an object here, and the light from it will you know, um, go through the lens, and be converged onto this point, and then we get the virtual, the um, the real image is inverted, right? So first, at first, it's 60 centimeters, and this is that distance which is distance from object. And then we're going to have this distance from image. And then we have another situation, which is the second equation over here. We move it a little closer, right? The object was a little closer. So now the distance from the, of the object from the center of the lens is going to be 40 centimeters. Now when the light goes through it, it's going to make an image 
but it goes a little bit further. So you get this real image, invert it, and importantly, the D I, which is distance from image, is going to become 10 centimeters more. So that reflects the DI here. So I hope that made made you understand it. Okay. So now we just need to do a little bit of algebra to solve for the focal length, which we can do here. You notice that um, that we can set the focal lengths equal to each other. So one over sixty plus one over di equals 1 over 40 plus 1 over di plus 10. And if we take 1 over 40 and subtract it by 1 over 60, we're going to get 1 over 120. Okay, so I've basically taken this and subtracted it by both sides. Now, what we can do is take this and subtract it by both sides so we can move it to the left. So let me shift things around here a little bit so we have space. And we need to make the denominators of these the same, so let's see. So we're going to multiply uh, this one by di, so this is going to become di, di, di plus 10 minus, and then this left side is going to be multiplied by di plus 10 on both top and bottom. DI plus 10 and the bottom will be DI times DI plus 10. Now we have common denominators here so we can basically um, subtract these two quantities on top. When you subtract them you get you get just you get 10 because right, the negative di here right, cancels out with the positive di here so we just get 10. So now we have this situation. So let me delete this, this stuff so we have space. Now what you can do here is multiply both sides by di times di plus 10, so it'll move over here. So, and then you can multiply both sides by 120, so this would go away, and then this would be multiplied by 120. So let me just do this on the same one. So this goes away, and this would be multiplied by 120. And if you rewrite this, it'll be it will be di times di plus ten times one thousand two hundred. So let's get rid of this. Now this, if you multiply out the di's, you'll get this, and this is a, we can use the quadratic formula to solve this. So we've got negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. And we got 2a in the bottom. So if we were to, to substitute the numbers that we have here for these, negative b is negative 10. 
b squared um, 10 is b so <clears throat> it's gonna be 100 minus 4 a is 1 because this has no nothing on it c is negative 1200 2a which is just 2 times 1 so put this into my calculator I get 30. Now, what exactly is 30? 30 is, is di. So distance from the image is 30. So let me delete this debacle over here. And this as well. So we've just figured out that di is 30. Specifically centimeters, because everything is centimeters in this case. Now we can use this equation, it's simpler, to find one, find a focal length. So instead of writing di, I will write 30. And again, positive 30, because that's what we got, and also it's a real image, so real images are positive di's. So if you solve this, 31 over plus 61 over, it'll give you um, <coughs> 1 over focal length equals 1 over 20. So focal length is 20 centimeters, right? That's how you solve the problem. Now, if you were intimidated by this, don't be, because the math on that is is a lot. Most problems in uh, college physics class, you know, is not going to be this tough. All right. <clears throat> so this question talks about mirrors. Uh, they're a little bit different than lenses. So the question says an object is 12 centimeters in front of the concave mirror and the image is 3 centimeters in front of the mirror. What is the focal length of the mirror? So here's how mirrors work. This is a good way of drawing this. So mirrors, what they do is they um, they reflect the light as opposed to letting it pass through them. So let me look up a picture of this so I can remember how um, to draw it well. All right, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to have what's called a concave mirror and a convex mirror. So this is a concave mirror and this is a convex mirror. A concave mirror works like this. We have an object that's facing up. And then it is uh, emitting some light from it that is going to the mirror. Now this mirror is going to reflect the light onto a single point, this concave mirror. So the image is over here. And the image is going to be inverted. And in this case, this image that's inverted and it's on the left side is going to be the real image. So the deep, the distance from object is going to be over here and the distance from the image is going to be right here. So in these cases the distance from the image is positive right, because it's a real image and the focal length of the mirror um, which you can write for F that's also positive. So that's a concave mirror for you. Now a con convex mirror is a little bit different. We have an image that is upright starting up, but then the light goes through it to the mirror, and then it's reflected in all different directions, right? And, and the light from here goes back. 
Now, you don't form a real image, you form a virtual image. And if you remember virtual images, you basically trace the path of it, pretend like it goes back, right? This is the virtual image. And the image is going to be at the back of, of the mirror. So it's going to be upright, meaning it's going to be a virtual image. So when you use the equation, and it's the same equation for, for less lenses, should have mentioned, but this distance from image is going to be negative here. Important to realize. Okay. And then this distance from object is, is always going to be positive in all cases. The focal length of this is negative. Okay. So that's a little different than what we saw in mirrors. If you need to go back and um, and look at the mirrors and compare it and really try to understand it. In this case, we have a concave mirror, so we're going to eliminate this one. An object is 12 centimeters in front of the concave mirror. So this DO here is 12. Image is 3 meters um, in front of the mirror. So it's to the left, the zone is the front. So it makes sense that the image is in front of the mirror. So this is going to be equal to three centimeters and they're asking for the focal length right this is the question so we use the same equation so the focal length is equal to um, so this is 12 and then distance from the image is three so if we solve this Focal length is equal to 2.4 centimeters. All right. Now, <clears throat> there's an aspect of this that we didn't talk about, but I will talk about it now. Let's take, so this is a lens. This is a diverging lens. Let's draw a diverging lens. Diverging lenses look like this. So the light is going in all different directions as it's entering. So we have an object. I should do the right light rays that I usually do. It's going over here. It's going over here. All right. And this is just going um, straight through it. It's kind of in the center of it. If you follow the trace of the light rays, they will all go back to this point over here. And in, in case of lenses, this is a virtual image. But it's going to be upright. Now, <clears throat> off the variables we talk about, we have the focal length of the lens itself, right? In this case, it's going to be negative. We have the distance from the image, from the distance of the image from the center of the lens. So this is di, distance from image, and it's also going to be negative. And we have distance from, or distance of object. Right? This is going to be positive in all cases. But we also have two other variables here. We have what is called the height of the image and the height of the object. So this quantity here, what I'm drawing, this would give you the height of the object. And then this would give you the height of the image. Now, if you have a diverging lens, let's imagine we have a diverging lens. Let me draw it real quick. the light rays converge onto this point and the image is facing downward right the height of the object is always going to be um, positive right because the image is, is by convention always upright but in the diverging lens situation the 
image is inverted, so the, the height of the image is actually negative. But here, the height of the image is actually positive. All right. So understand that. Now you might wonder what is the equation that relates all these. Um, there is one called the magnification equation. So magnification is equal to the height of the image over the height of the object equal to negative um, of the distance from the image to the distance of the object. So the so the so for the image itself, its distance from the from the center of the lens or the mirror is equal to its height, and its the distance of the object is going to be um, proportional to its height. <coughs> so, given that information, we're going to, we can solve um, any of these variables. So, in this situation. Question, let's read it. An object is 10.4 centimeters tall. Uh, keep in mind this is an object, so not the image of it, right, which is here, but the object. So this is 10.4 centimeters. And it's 4.8 centimeters in front of a diverging lens. So the distance of the object from the image, or from the, not the image, but the distance of the object from the lens is 4.8 centimeters. And the image itself which is here, is four centimeters from the lens. So this distance from image is negative four centimeters. Negative because again, it's a diverging lens. They ask how tall is the image? They're asking the height of this image here. So to solve this, we're solving for hi, right? Um, height of the object, we have it, it's over here, 10.4. And then we have a negative distance of the image. It's negative four, so this would kind of cancel out negatives. And then <coughs> distance of the object is 4.8. So if you just multiply both sides by 10.4, We're going to get 8.67, um, and you kind of repeat sixes until it reaches a seven. So the image is 8.67 centimeters tall. So this type of question here is testing a different concept. So let's read it. Light enters a substance from air at an angle of 32 degrees and continues at an angle of 23 degrees. What is the index of refraction of the substance? So let's talk about refraction and reflection. Let's say that we have a surface and this surface again let's say here um, we have let's say let's say we have water on the bottom and we have air on top so this line represents a, a break between substances and let's say that light is coming in from the air and it's hitting this water okay now this this light ray is coming in at a specific angle and so let's try and measure that angle right how do we measure it we're going to draw what's called a normal line okay and a normal line is always going to be perpendicular to the to the interface between the surfaces of of the different surfaces so if this is the line that represents the break between water and air this normal line is always going to be perpendicular to it, okay, 90 degree angle here. So this 
this normal line is a reference point for all the angles that we're going to have. So let's say it's coming in at an angle of, say, theta, right? And let's say the light ray is going to be reflected. If it's going to be reflected, that means that it's going to go like this. And the angle at which it's reflected, it's always going to be the exact same, right? So this is what I just showed here is reflection. And in terms of reflection, the angle uh, of incidence, we call this angle of incidence, is always going to be equal to the angle of reflection. Reflection, um, like, let's just call that capital R. Now that's the first situation. But here you're, you're seeing a different situation and you're specifically seeing the word refraction. So that's a different uh, phenomenon. So let's talk about that. Refraction is when we have the same situation. Let's say we have air and we have water. And we can, we can have the normal line. And let's say that the light ray is coming in the same way. We have, an, we have our angle of incidence. But in this case, as opposed to being reflected like this, it's being refracted. So it's actually going through the substance. So now we have what is called our angle of refraction with a lowercase r. Now you might be wondering, what is the relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction? There we can use a specific equation. Uh, it's called Snell's law. And it, it involves something like this. We have n um, yeah, of air. Oh, specifically, let's just call this substance 1, where it's coming from. Right? And this is called substance 2, where it's going to. So the, this, is, this n is called the index of refraction. And I'll explain what this means after I write the equation. So n times the sine of the angle of incidence is equal to n, but here the n is for the water, and 2 of the angle of refraction. Now this n is a, is a specific thing called the index of refraction, which you can see it written right here, right? index of refraction. And it's going to be different for every substance. But for air, it's about, you know, for air, the index of refraction is, is basically 1. And then for most substances, um, besides air, it's generally going to be um, a little bit, you know, higher than 1. So for water, it's, it's like a little bit higher. I think it's about 1.33. Excuse me, let me um, look it up. Water is, yeah, 1.33. So the relationship generally works like this. If the n of the, the substance that we're entering, let's say of the water in this case, is higher, that means the an this angle becomes smaller. So we, we bend the light ray more. The, the higher the n that the light ray is entering, the more we bend the light. So in this question, what we're talking is really the second situation, this one. So because of that, let's get rid of the, the initial thing we drew. So. so we have light enters a substance from air at an angle of 32 degrees. So this angle of incidence is 32 degrees, and we're acting from air. And we're told that continues at an angle of 23. So this angle of reflect uh, refraction is 23. And they're asking for the index of refraction of the substance. So that means that n of 1, which is the substance it's entering from, which is in this case air, that one is going to be the index of refraction of air, which is, as we said, is always 1. Okay, and then we have sine of, of, um, of 
the an angle of incidence, which is 32 degrees. And then we have N, which is the angle for the water, the index of refraction of the necessarily water in this case, just um, the substance that they say in the question that we don't know. So this is whatever substance. And then we have the angle of refraction, which in this case is 23 degrees. So if we solve for n, you just take 32 sine divided by 23 sine. You will get 1.36, or really, let's just be a little more precise, 1.356. And this, this quantity doesn't have a unit. It's just a ratio in this equation.